Ah, if it isn't MBT. Who's there? Come now, don't you recognize your most marketable content? You! That's right, and the time has come to do what must be done. I don't understand. You know there's no profit in Yu-Gi-Oh! Become a ban ban tuba. No, I can't! I like Yu-Gi-Oh! You'll like the money even more. Think, a captive audience of iPad babies. You're right. Millions of little children stuck at an iPad. Billions of views! And then we will rule the world! No, I won't do it. I'm gonna go listen to the Green Goblin Mask. Hey, you should try out the new Goblin deck. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I've probably mentioned this a few times, but I have a Patreon. And on this Patreon, patrons can vote for one 10 minute testing a month. Last month, they made the hardest choice there is. Which Phantom Nightmare archetype to start testing first? Presenting Goblins. I'm going green goblin mode. So here's the list, and bet you weren't expecting to see a ghost trick deck. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygopro.com. D-E-C-K dot com. So with that, let's get into Goblin. Goblins are an archetype that's been around since the very beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh! Kind of. See, Goblin Attack Force was technically the genesis of a new series of monsters, though their identity is now a little more different than man with big number get tired after attacking. The goblins that release in Phantom Nightmare do one thing incredibly well, make rank threes. Each of their main deck monsters benefits from the ability to detach errant material from rank 3 monsters, either to summon themselves, others, or just plus, with the eventual aim of swarming the field with as many medium-sized mid-range monsters as possible. Now this might sound a little niche, but you'd be surprised just how many Xyz monsters have synergy with cards that remove their material. The first and most obvious choice is the Xyz armor monsters, which thanks to the goblins, can play a minimal main deck suite in order to end on a novel form of interaction. The ghost tricks are powerful as well. All Angel really needs is the base material to plus before becoming one half of an F-Zero. Downward Magician is a free piece of material underneath the three you've already sucked dry, and Bamboozler can refill any of those monsters you've overpaid on. With two extremely powerful tribal monsters as well, these cards are poised to go goblin mode. So with that, let's get into the card by card. It's a little difficult to talk about these cards individually, because they're all part of an internally consistent loop, so I'm going to do my best to explain them in the order that they'll probably be played. First up is Goblin Rider Doug the Assaulter. This is a level 3 Earth Warrior monster, and if it's in your hand, you can detach a material from the monster on the field, and if you do, special summon this card, and if normal or special summoned, you can add a Goblin Rider spell trap from your deck to your hand. Let's go through the targets for that. We have Grand Arrival of the Goblin Riders. This is their search spell. It adds a Goblin Monster from your deck to your hand, then you can detach a material from a monster on the field, and if you do, special summon a level 4 or lower monster from your hand. It can be banished from the graveyard, detaching a material from a monster on the field to add a goblin from your graveyard to your hand as well. We have Grand Meeting of the Goblin Riders. This is a continuous spell, which allows goblin monsters you control to gain 300 attack for each goblin monster you control, and then during your main phase you can normal a goblin monster in addition to your other normal summon or set. And additionally, you can target two goblin monsters that have a level and then activate one of these effects. The level of one becomes the level of the other, or they both become the combined original levels of the two. This, targeting two threes, enables you to summon Goblin's Crazy Beast. It can be made with two level six monsters. Once per turn, you can target a spell trap on the field, attach two materials from a monster on the field, and if you do, attach that card to this card as material. If a monster you control be destroyed by a card effect, you can detach a material from this card instead. And if it's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, then attach a goblin from your graveyard to it as 
as material once per turn. The final card that Doug the Assaulter can search is this Goblin Rider Stampede, which you'll notice we're only playing a single copy of because it's just terrible to draw. During the main phase, you can immediately after this effect resolves, Xyz summon using only goblins you control as material, and if you control a goblin Xyz monster, target an effect monster on the field, detach a material from a monster on the field, and if you do, negate the targeted monster's effects until the end of this turn. It's a weird form of negation that plays around things like infinite and permanence for the most part. After that, we have more goblins. <laughs> goblin Rider, Mianda the Cold-Blooded. If this card is normally special summoned, you can special summon a goblin monster from your hand, except for herself. And if it's in your graveyard, you can detach a material from a monster on the field. And if you do, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Though, realistically, it's probably just going to end up under an Xyz. After that, we've got Goblin Rider Clutter the Noisy. If this card is normally special summoned, you can target a goblin in your graveyard, special summon it. During your opponent's main phase, if this is in your graveyard, you can detach a material from a monster on the field, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. And two copies of Goblin Rider Boon the Mock Speed. During the main phase, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, quick, you can detach a material from a monster on the field. And if you do, special summon this card. Until the end of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon Goblin Rider Boon the Mock Speed. Now, importantly, that does not say a monster you control. So if your opponent makes an Xyz monster that absolutely needs to detach all of its material. This is almost an interruption. We've got some extenders, three copies of Kagamucha Knight, and of course, three tour guide from the underworld, and one fiendish rhino warrior. Uh, this card, like in Unchained, is your one card combo, uh, but it's a little crusty and low impact. Ideally, you would just like to open a couple of differently named goblins and non-engine. Speaking of, we are playing one copy of Rhoda, one foolish burial, and one ghost trick shot. Uh, with this card, what we're aiming to do is overlay two threes for a copy of ghost trick alucard if you're unfamiliar with this line then overlay on top of the alucard a copy of ghost trick angel of mischief this can detach the alucard to add a ghost trick shot to your hand then activate the ghost trick shot summoning back the alucard so you can get a second ghost trick angel of mischief for an f0 and a utopic draco future uh, this can be done incredibly early which is one of the only ways you can force a nibiru out from your opponent without committing to something like bamboozling gossip shadow which is not particularly powerful against any other open importantly uh, ghost trick angel of mischief could theoretically get another ghost trick card. So if you want to play something like Renovation, there's an available slot for that as well. Finally, we're on one copy of Full Armored Xyz. If an Xyz monster is on the field immediately after this effect resolves, Xyz summon an Xyz monster using monsters you control. Banish this from your graveyard. Target an Xyz monster you control. Equip another Xyz monster from your face-up field or graveyard to that monster as an equip spell with the following effects. If it gains attack equal to this card's attack, and if it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, destroy this card instead. What we aim to do here is go into the rank 3 Xyz Armor Torpedo, which allows us to detach two materials to draw a card. Once all the materials are off that, we can go into Xyz Armor Fortress, and then it can't be used as material for an Xyz summon while it has material, which means we are going to have to jump through some hoops, either by using its effect to detach up to two materials from this card to add armored Xyz cards with different names from your deck to your hand, equal to the number detached, or by using the goblins to detach its material. And of course, we're going to finish on a copy of Full Armor Dark Lancer, which can Xyz summon a Full Armor Dark Knight Lancer by using a rank 5 or 6 monster you control and gains 300 for each material and equipped card it has. Then once per turn allows you to target an Xyz card in your graveyard, add it to your hand, and if an equipped card becomes equipped to a monster you control, suck a monster your opponent controls underneath it as material. We're playing some non-engine. We've got three copies of Ash Blossom, three copies of Ghost Bell, three copies of Droll and Lockbird, two triple tack, and a called by the grave. Uh, I think the Droll and Lockbird and the Ash are probably non-negotiable, but I'll reserve judgment on what you should be playing otherwise until the metagame kind of coalesces. For Xyz, we've got Divine Arsenal, Double A Zeus, Sky Thunder, we've got the Dark Lancer, the Crazy Beast, the Xyz Armor Fortress, the Downard, Double Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief, Xyz Armor Torpedo, Double Big Head Gabonga, Ghost Trick Alucard, Cicada King, which is just an incredibly powerful card. Uh, it is sort of a piece of negation, and it's a generic three. Uh, we've got Bamboozler, which... Uh, is a way to play around hand traps, but uh, realistically, you don't want to be giving your opponent extra cards. Um, you'd rather play through it, I believe. Uh, Utopic Draco Future and Utopic Future in the side. We've got three copies of Kurikara Div Incarnate. Uh, we've got three copies of Soul Release. This is uh, seeing a lot of play against these Fire King Snake Eye decks, and it's not hard to see why. One of the only mass removal spells in the game. We've got Harpy's Feather Duster, Triple Triple Tactics Thrust, Herald of the Abyss for Errant Pearly Players, Triple Cosmic Cyclone, and one Evenly Match. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Speedroid Kashtira, and man, I could not be more happy that this deck is finally putting up results. 
Unfortunately, the result it's about to put up is a fat L. We're going first, and our hand looks pretty good. We're going to begin with the effect of our Mianda the Cold-Blooded. We will chain Kagamusha Knight and then resolve Mianda in order to summon this Clutter the Noisy before overlaying for a big-headed Gamonga and walking directly into an Ash Blossom. No big deal, we have triple tack, and because we have so many extenders, we might as well draw, and there's one right there. Down comes Grand Arrival of the Goblin Riders that allows us to get that Clutter the Noisy onto the field and summon back this copy of Mianda the Cold-Blooded to go into an Alucard. From here, we're going into the Ghost Trick line. We'll activate Angel of Mischief for a shot, and now's your chance to be a big one. We'll go for the shot targeting the Alucard, go for a second Angel of Mischief, and then overlay for a copy of Utopic Future and UDF. That Alucard gets to add back the shot as well, because it's not a once per turn, and then we can activate the effect of the Meanda the Cold-Blooded in the graveyard to go for a Cicada King, following it up with an Armor Fortress for one, setting a card and ending on a Suck, a Monster Negate, and whatever Cicada King is. Unfortunately for our opponent, though this board may look innocuous, we are also holding the format-destroying super threat in our grip. They pick six cards off the top of their deck, end on one that loses to Droll, and there he is. Uh, they're going to infinite and permanence targeting the UDF. That's fine. No big deal. Afterwards, we'll go for full armored Xyz in order to make our Dark Lancer. They're going to go for a Mudoshi Piper into a clearing Fast Dragon to go to the battle phase. We'll activate Dark Lancer. That's going to prompt the Fast Dragon, but that'll prompt our Sakata King, at which point our opponent, holding some cash tier cards they can't resolve, will concede. Our second match is up against Mikanko, and oh, missing Isold, are we? Well, I'm not missing Acid Golem of Destruction, so uh, <laughs> good luck to our opponent. They're going to begin with a copy of Oomphy. They're going to activate the effect and send the green one to the graveyard, at which point we will droll and lockbird them. Welcome to the format. They're going to go for the Grand Legend. They're going to send a copy of Mayawashi Dori to the graveyard and summon out Oomphy. We will activate Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion for the graveyard summon of Mayawashi Dori. They'll set one card and pass back to us, and that's three differently named cards and a tour guide. It's like I never stopped playing Unchained. We'll go for a Fiendish Rhino Warrior here. Our opponent's going to activate Rivalry, I think probably expecting we're on Unchained, and activating Rondo afterwards. We will go for Grand Arrival, and then we'll follow it up with Grand Meeting. Grand Meeting allows us to get out this copy of Meanda without using our normal summon, and we will go ahead and go into Big Headed Gabonga, getting an extender here, the Mach Speed, at which point we can activate the effect of the Big Headed Gabonga in order to suck our opponent's Oomphy. After that's done, they don't have a Mikanko on their side of the field, which means we get our monster back and can use it as material for the Ghost Trick line. Now, one thing about the Ghost Trick line is not only does it make UDF, it puts out a ton of damage. So here, all we need is one further extender. Here, the Cold Blooded from the Graveyard, and our opponent is facing down Lethal. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's on, what else? Fire King Snake Eyes. Oh, they've got the subversion in hand. You know, it's actually not that subversive. I've seen it pretty frequently. Okay, our hand looks pretty good, and our opponent doesn't have any non-engine, so let's see what we can do. We're going to begin with a copy of Tour Guide of the Underworld, summoning the Cold-Blooded. From here, we can overlay for Big Head Gabonga. We'll activate the effect and grab ourselves a mock speed before firing off the Grand Arrival, and activating the effect of the Clutter the Noisy in order to bring back that Cold-Blooded. Next, we're going to activate Reinforcement of the Army for Doug the Assaulter, and afterwards, we can overlay for an Alucard, trigger the effect of the Doug the Assaulter, detaching a material, then activating its on-field effect in order to grab the trap. From here, we can go into Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief, detaching the Alucard, and now's your chance to be a big shot, bring back the Alucard, overlay for another copy of Angel of Mischief, trigger the Cold-Blooded in Graveyard to detach the Alucard, use the Alucard's effect in order to cycle back the shot, and overlay for a Utopic Future, and a Utopic Draco Future. Now that we've passed the Nibiru skill check, it's time to draw off Torpedo, wow, that's a good one, and Armor Fortress in order to get the full Armor Xyz Trap. We will finally end with the effect of the Grand Arrival of the Goblin Riders, setting a couple of cards and attaching from deck, using the effect of our big-headed Gabonga. Here we're just trying to get our opponent out of cards, and that's not too difficult because the Diabell Star line is kind of resource-intensive. Okay, we're going to activate the trap in response to the subversion, but our monster is still going to go to the back row. They're going to activate Popular, at which point we are going to activate Full Armored Xyz, and then activate its Graveyard Effect in order to suck it underneath our Dark Lancer. Our opponent's going to go for Sanctuary here, and unfortunately we don't have a way to negate the effect of the Fire King Island, so we will burn this Utopic Draco Future on the Diabell Star, keeping it for ourselves, at which point our opponent will Fire King Island, pitching this Ash in order to get to Garunix. That's unfortunate. They'll go for the effect of Garunix on field, sending a copy of Bayrong, then activating Snake Eye in order to get to the Fire King half of their deck. They're going to go for Ponix, but unfortunately they have to go for the Immolation here in order to clean up the board. They do so, and we trigger the effect of the Alucard in order to go ahead and plus even further. Our opponent will, in standby phase, activate the effect of the Bayrong. We will negate with the Utopic Draco Future and the Ponix. They could not have possibly known we had Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, but because we do, it's lights out. So it's time for game two, and God, if this isn't two perfect hands for this format. Both of us with multiple pieces of non-engine and sparse access to our main. Well, hopefully one of us will be able to play this game. Our opponent's going to 
to begin with Sanctuary of the Fire Kings, and this is one of those hands that if we ash the effect of the Fire King Island, the rest of it goes away. <laughs> It'll just pass turn here, but they have a Veiler and a Droll, so they have to be feeling a little good. We're going to go for the Mox Speed here, summoning the Kagamuchinate into a big-headed Gabonga. That's going to be met with an Effect Veiler. Afterwards, we can go ahead and fire off this copy of Foolish Burial in order to send a Cold-Blooded, then activate the Graveyard Effect, detaching to summon itself, and activating the Mox Speed Effect in order to detach the second copy. They're going to go for Kieran here. That Kieran will be summoned to their side of the field, and now it's time to go for the Ghost Trick line. We will detach the Alucard to get a copy of Shot, at which point they will Droll and Lockbird us. That's right, this deck kind of plays all right around Droll and Lockbird. Uh, we're going to be able to go for Utopic Draco Future here, cycling back the Shot, and then unfortunately for our opponent, we get to go to the Battle Phase, and in Main Phase 2 can activate Soul Release, banishing four cards from our opponent's graveyard and one from ours. Afterwards, we can go into an Xyz Armor Fortress and pass turn. Our opponent draws for turn, it's not sufficient, and they will concede. So we're back with the deck and wow, 4-0. I'll admit we did draw non-engine and plays every game, but that's kind of what the deck does. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the goblins give you an incredible amount of extenders, converting unused Xyz material into more bodies on field for extending into multiple monsters. Two, having access to the generic three pool and extenders means the deck can put out fairly impressive boards and play through certain hand traps fairly well. And three, the Goblin Rank 3 offers non-destruction removal, which fares well into decks that rely on destruction to make plays. And the cons. One, like my mother always said, the best way to get around the Goblins is to kill them with a large rock. This deck's options to play around Nibiru require extremely high roll hands, so 9 out of 10 times you're going to be forced to simply play into it or make an extremely unremarkable board that pretty much anyone can play through. Two, the deck doesn't have an in-archetype one-card combo. Now, this is hardly the end of the world. You do have a one-card combo from Normal Summoning a Tour Guide, but some of your hands, like Unchained Before You, are going to be very resource-intensive. And three, the deck is quite bad into graveyard hate. Sure hope, um, no one's playing any of that this format. Overall, the riders seem to be speeding their way to playability, with a promising first wave. Future support can only bolster this already impressive deck, and importantly, that goes for future goblins and any future rank 3 extenders. Expect to see some experimentation with this one in the upcoming format. So that's that. Thanks so much for watching. These 10 minute testings are functionally subsidized by and frequently suggested by my patrons, including the ones you see in front of you. I want to give a quick shout out to the following, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Brett Henry, Canner, Darkmaster Zork, Derpin Dragon, Devin Senpai, DJ Elephant, Enraged Peacock, Gravity, John Piet, Juan Cruz Avila Zati, Night Mary, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. DeRezzo, MBT Play Medolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, N54 Lionheart, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Troy Says By Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, and Yuki. I couldn't have done it without you.